people under 30 who already managed to save 100k. How did you do it? I set an automatic withdrawal via electronic banking to occur on every payday. That way, I never even saw the money I was saving so I conditioned myself to live on less. I would also save my tax refunds. Currently doing the same helps a lot when you don't have to set it aside yourself because temptation is never there. My dad died and split his fortune evenly between me and my two siblings. Now my two siblings are in negative numbers and they always tell me not to make the same mistake they did. I was on track for that, but then I got married and bought a house. So get a decent job, stay single, and live like you did in college in a small butt apartment. Too depressed to spend my paychecks, lived like a pauper for 10 years, only buying pet food, the odd video game and just enough people food to keep me on my feet. Don't use I can afford it as justification for an expensive purchase or expenditure that you don't actually need. I could afford to live in a $1,800 month luxury apartment, but instead pay $750 for a decent 2 bedroom with a roommate. I could buy a brand new 2019 car but instead keep driving the same pickup truck I had in college. I could order a $40 steak, but instead get a $15 burger. I'm not saying don't treat yourself occasionally, or spend big money when you need to, but be stingy. Over 35 years at an 8% return on investment from a pretty safe mutual fund, your investments will multiply by a factor of 10. $10 return for every $1 invested. Your first paragraph is something that has helped me. Little things make a big difference. Buying generic store brand, or shopping at Aldi and buying bulk stuff at Sam's helps too. Work on ships as an engineer. Six months out of the year I'm not spending any of the money I'm making. Tack that onto not having any payments. Live at parents house at 25. The money saves up really quick. Living at parents house. The unsexy secret to building wealth in your 20s. Got a masters. Work as a data scientist in a cheap city in the Midwest. Was privileged enough not to have student debt. This is probably the biggest factor. I am 30 with a net worth of 126k, $105k retirement account, $12k cash, $8k equity. I aggressively paid off my student loans and car loan. I started saving with an IRA within a year of starting my career. I took a reasonably high paying job, military officer. We stayed a single car household and always lived in Rias Nabe apartments. I biked or ran to work. Housing was never over like 20% of income. No longer single car and I drive now. But I bought a reasonable house. $125k. With no maintenance issues. I am able to max my IRA in 401k. And put a little extra into the mortgage. Savings rate is about 40% pre-tax. It is unreal to me that you could purchase a house with no real issues for 125k. Where I am at now that's about a fourth of the cost of a small house in the less desirable part of town. I've gotta be a bit jealous of those prices. Because at the moment I can't see myself being able to afford a house for a long long time. Albeit I am a young guy. Congrats on your success. Hard work pays off. First day of work for real job. Signed up for 10% of my paycheck to go to my 401k. Every raise and promotion after that. Half of that goes to my 401k. Egg. $5k raise. I allocate $2.50k of that to 401k. And the other half to lifestyle. Sometimes. I'll just randomly up my contribution by $50. I really don't miss it out of my paycheck and that $50 times 24 paychecks a year over 30 years will be huge do that more times than not and you're a millionaire one day it's funny because there are people i work with who i know make the same amount as me and they have nothing or all but nothing to show for it another person already said it in this thread but i could have a newer car i could have a bigger house i could make people think i have more money than i do or actually as much money as i do or i stay humble and keep saving it grows exponentially in the market. One day, I'll be one of those evil people who only pay capital gains tax and since my 401k is Roth, I won't pay any tax on that when I need that money. I'm not rich. I don't make a ton of money, but I save when it counts. 
My husband and I are dual income but we only live on my income. I make a bit less than him right now. His money goes straight to savings and we don't touch it. I hope you live in a community property state or his income goes into a joint account. My brother-in-law did this. How? He networked relentlessly throughout college so that he landed a very well paying, albeit stressful, job straight out of college. He also continued living in the dump he lived in college where the rent was next to nothing. He was also super frugal, like when he went out for beers with friends. He took the money out of his spare change jar and that was all he would spend that night. TLDR. Good job. Extremely frugal, and not me. I have 62k in pure cash savings. 36k in my retirement account, so I'm technically 2k off 100k right now, but I'll have that at the end of the month after payday. I'm 24 years old. Technically speaking, I'd actually need another 7 months to be at the 100k mark in order to clear my unofficial debt. I owe my parents for some of my school and car, but they'd rather me save that money for my house down payment and pay them back later. As for how, well the no debt thing is an absolute lifesaver. I went to the closest university and lived at home, so I had a 15 minute commute. I had a scholarship that paid a good chunk of tuition, so I only had to pay about 3k out of pocket a semester. I worked a few hours of a part time job during college which helped covered some. My parents covered the rest, but not having to pay for dorm meal plan saved a ton of money. Not everyone can do this. So I know I am extremely lucky. I got a CS degree and had a job right out of college that paid pretty well. I had a cheap renting position so that allowed me to funnel over half of my take home pay into savings each month. And that was the first thing I did. Once it's in savings, I'm not allowed to touch it. Same amount goes in each month. Anything I don't spend that month is bonus that gets moved in as well. I rarely eat out. I don't drink. I don't spend money on just random things. Plus, it's just clutter, and when I do buy things, I buy quality and take care of it. I also do a lot of thrift store shopping, most of my kitchen is stocked this way. I conserve things where I can, avoid single use items, I reuse ziplock bags as much as hygienically possible, I try and use Tupperware instead tbh, I avoid paper plates plastic utensils, rarely use paper towels or napkins, opting to use tea towels for most things. So it's a lot of little things, but it adds up. I still enjoy myself, because luckily my pay is nice enough where I can. So it's not like I'm buying rice and beans ramen for dinner all the time and not going out and enjoying myself. I part lease a horse, I buy comics, I go to local concerts, I do enjoy a good meal out every now and then. So I have fun still. But the key thing is to just regulate yourself and your spending and never get into stupid debt. Think credit card balances, car payment on a car you really couldn't afford, even buying too much house. I have 62k in pure cash savings, 36k in my retirement account, so I'm technically 2k off 100k right now, but I'll have that at the end of the month after payday. I'm 24 years old, pfft, loser, d, seriously, well done. I invested in real estate. Worked the night shift at McDonald's until I could afford a $40k foreclosure, a home path property with 5% down. Spent my nights at MCD and my days fixing the house. 8 years later, that house is now worth $140k. Last year, I pulled $60k in equity out of the house and bought another, this one for $195k. I now have renters in the first house paying me $1100 mo. Due to renovations on my new house, Zillow says it's worth $285k and it recently appraised for $255k officially. I'm going to pull another $60 or 80k in equity out of this one and pick up another fixer upper as a second rental, probably later this year. In the middle of those 8 years I dropped out of college and landed a $40k factory job. It sucks but it's getting easier. I'm 29 this year. I don't have $100k in cash but I'm worth probably $150k or so in equity. And I now manage almost half a million in property assets. So yeah, work hard, apply yourself. If you hate your life, fill your free time with making it better. It's too easy to sit around and loathe yourself. You'll eventually realize that nobody will help you except that guy in the mirror.
Grab a hammer and watch YouTube videos. It's not hard. Go where housing is cheap. I drive almost an hour to work but I live on 10 acres and my house is 2800 square feet. Near the pier. Am I? Also. Charge your girlfriend rent and save the frick out of it. She'll pay if she's serious about a future with you because you're building financial security for your kids. I'm engaged now. She pays me $500 motor split the mortgage and has been for about 6 years now. Don't blow your assets on cheap thrills. Leverage them. Privilege. That's honestly the answer. I was lucky enough to have a little extra to start my adult life with. And that little extra allowed me to move countries twice for work. Hold out for a better job. Take a pay cut for a job that fulfilled me. Cover rent during a 6 month training. And pay work expenses out of pocket knowing it would be a few pay periods before I'd be reimbursed. I didn't have student loans. I had access to cheap healthcare. At one point, my parents loaned me money on very generous terms. Have I worked my butt off? Yes. Did I have advantages others did not? Yes. Anyone. Not in CS. Under 30. Able to save 100k. While not living at your parents. How did you do it? 1. Make good income. Military than manufacturing operations. 2. Uh, save aggressively. For example, I max my 401k and IRA. 2b. Pay down debt aggressively. I had 50k student loans and 20k car loan before I understood money. 3. Live frugally. I've gone over a year without driving to work before. I'm in my early 30s now but I had over 100k dollars in the bank before I was 30. There were a few factors that led to this, ranging from sheer luck to lucrative life choices. I grew up without a lot. We weren't destitute but it was pretty lean. And my mother was never that good with money. This made me really, really careful with money when I got out on my own. Went to a cheap university so I had less than 15k dollars in student loans when I graduated. I would have had more like 30k but I worked all through uni as well. Sometimes multiple jobs. Got a good job right out of school. Paid 40k to start but with a few promotions I'm up to low 6 figures 8 years later. When I was in university, someone ran a red light and hit me, and I got 20k dollars from the insurance settlement. This created a nice buffer in my bank account that really helped me I think. When you aren't scrambling to pay your bills, you're able to make plans for your money. Moved in with my boyfriend, now husband, at about age 25. He's also great with money, and we of course got to split our living expenses. Took advantage of my employer's 401k RRSP matching as soon as I qualified, and have been contributing about 8% of my pay since. Automatic transfers to my savings accounts and mutual funds. You can't miss it if you never see it. But finally, and I cannot stress this enough, no kids would not be in the financial situation I am now with regrets. No way. Background info. My parents and I are first generation immigrants. They work low paying jobs as a night janitor housekeeper. I went to college, only took out a few thousand in loans every year. My parents helped with $1.2k, and the rest were grants. I interned during the summer, graduated with a bachelor's in civil engineering with $10k in student debt from attending a big state university. Continued working at the place that I interned. I've got low 6 figures in savings now, but if I had invested it since graduation it would realistically be about 100-200k more so that part kind of makes me salty. I've never really been sick and I work out regularly to maintain good health so I've never had to worry about medical debt. Basically, I don't spend a lot of money on trivial stuff. I'm not into fashion or chasing electronic trends. When I need or want something I buy it for the hardware and quality rather than the brand name. I never drank in college and drink maybe once a week now. This saves a ton of money. I didn't have a car until I was 27 because I didn't need one. Public transportation worked very well for me. My biggest vice is eating out. I travel. I have fun, but I do so from a calculating perspective. I generally plan ahead and the savings add up very quickly. Stopped eating out. Stopped drinking. Found a partner who wanted to live the same life and retire before we hit our 40s. Our biggest expense is filling up our gas for out vehicles. About 2.5 years away from 30, 
I won't have 100k, but will likely have close to 50k. If I didn't have 100k in student debt, I'd easily hit 100k. My parents paid for a substantial amount of my college, room, and board. I only took out about 5k in loans for all 4 years. After college, I went off to law school, which is where most of my debt comes from. I've steadily received raises as I have continued practicing and now save $1,200 a month. Even after deducting paying $1,500 in student loans, I also have 6% automatically taken out of my paychecks, which is deposited into my 401k. I'm generally frugal. I do not eat out very much. I do not drive a nice car. The suits I wear were gifts or bought while on sale. I live in a nice and clean apartment, but by no means is my place high end. That's why I only pay $750 in rent. I will never understand why my former classmates chose to live in deluxe condos, $1,800 plus month, during law school. They paid for the rent using student loans, and they racked up credit card debt to pay for some pretty luxurious items, $500 shoes, $1,200 watches, etc. I was fortunate enough to live at home till I was married, buy a house during the recession, go to community college and commute to a state college, got help buying my first $2,000 car, so there is a ton of help from my parents that set me up, and my husband's parents did the same, but that shouldn't discourage people who didn't start out the same as us. The biggest thing I've always done is to almost never buy anything I can't pay cash for or pay off before the bill is due. Cars are the obvious exception but even then, we didn't buy above our means. My car now is 8 years old with 120,000 plus miles on it but we just keep maintaining it and will ride it so long as it's reliable and safe. We bought a lot of furniture second hand, buy groceries at Aldi, use coupons constantly and are frugal even though we don't have to be. Also max the crap out of your retirement contributions. 1. Live at home. Grit your teeth and do the millennial live in your parents basement thing. 2. Commute to work on public transit. Most office jobs will pay or reimburse you for a transit pass. 3. Have parents who are amazing enough to pay for groceries. 4. Live in a city with a substantial tech industry that you can commute to. C.2. 5. Don't have a car. 6. Have a STEM degree from a school without outrageous tuition fees. Investing. Learn yourself. Even reaching out to a well-reviewed or recommended financial advisor is still better than leaving your money in the bank. You know all that crap about making your money work for you? Well it's true. And it takes less effort than you think. Worked a good paying job in a low cost of living area, put 15% of my income into a 401k and maxed out Roth IRA contributions every year, took about 5 years to hit 100k. Worked at a factory job pretty much full time and got a full ride baseball scholarship to pay off school, made some good investments and saved a ton, however I'm 25 now and still need to find another job. 401k at work. Saved at least the amount that would get me the full company match, sometimes more. Started putting additional money into a Roth IRA maybe around 24. I'm 30 now. All retirement accounts combined have $110,000. Started with a job out of college paying $51,000. The key is to not spend a lot of money and aggressively track your spending. Have a budget for every expense and stick as closely as possible to it. Live with roommates to reduce housing costs. Living with your parents for a while is even better if they don't suck. Grew up rich. Didn't have to work or pay for college. Had a house and car provided for me. I just bank my income and live off dividends from trust fund. I don't have any expensive hobbies. I like read, write, draw, watching movies. I live in an cheap country aka Portugal where my house mortgage cost less than nursery for my kid. I could have more money but I helped my mother financially a lot and had two kids. Also I own a small business. Ever since my first job I put 20% into an IRA or 401k depending on the what the job allowed. That way I never saw the money. Making 95k a year means a paycheck of $2000 to me. Every raise I have ever gotten feels as it should. Because I've never needed to put towards more retirement. 
not 30 yet but expecting to get there since I was a teenager I'd work on the weekends, and full time during the holidays, then after school immediately started working, I'd take the full student loan, all of that goes straight into investments. The trick was to live with the parents you save a ton of money that way. I only started paying a meaningful amount of rent at age 19. And even then working at the grocery store 40 hours a week and living cheap means I can save a lot. A combination of privilege, luck, and tragedy. Was privileged and lucky to graduate college without debt. I got a small scholarship, but it came nowhere close to covering the full tuition. Also, my dad died a couple days before my last semester started, so I ended up as the beneficiary of a couple life insurance policies. Had a lot of trouble finding a job right out of college and lived off the life insurance for a year. Invested most of the rest just as the economy was starting to recover from the mortgage crisis again. Luck. I don't have 100k saved at the bank, but including my IRAs, I'm doing well over that. Of course, I can't really touch most of that money until I retire, so I'm not living paycheck to paycheck, but I can't afford to be out of work for another year like after graduating. I'm on track. At my bank ally, I can open up pretty much unlimited accounts, as far as I can tell. I have one for my monthly allowance. My card's bills all draw from this pool of $1,500. I spend about $1,000 a month. I have an emergency fund account which thus far I've never touched except to fund. I have a small vacation fund. The rest is long-term savings. When I get paid, I basically move around funds to what I've decided to spend money on, other than my dollar sign 1000 slash mo allowance, and then send the remainder to long-term savings. I don't have access to a retirement account ATM, but if I did I'd be sending a good chunk of it to there as well. Basically, I think it's mostly about budgeting and remaining organized. I'm still a student and I should get close. I think if I made closer to a normal salary it would be quite easy. The more obvious aspect is don't spend money on stupid things. I won't say I never get a drink at a restaurant, but I rarely do. It just takes on tens of dollars to the bill, adds up if you do it a lot. Instead, we spend $25 on mixers vodka and make drinks at home for like 2 nights. It'd cost $100 plus to do that in a restaurant. Cook at home. Don't give in to the temptation of going out to eat on a regular basis. It matters a lot for someone making 35k a year. When you're making $350k, then you can ignore these expenses. Stay home for a few years if life allows it. Currently 25 at home most money gets pocketed besides car payment and lil spending money. Hard work. Tightening my belt and understanding the value of a dollar got me about 10k. Then I inherited the rest from my grandparents. TBH I'd rather have them back. To be honest, I was given a head start by my parents. They gave me some funds that I was to manage live off of when I went to university to get my degree. I lived as a frugal student while pocketing the cash. Once I got my degree, I took the 30k and bought an investment property and managed everything with the house. Repairs, purchase, tenants, etc. I was 22 years old. I sold the home at the age of 26 and was paid out in capital gains of about 106k. I had a head start. But I was smart enough to save and recognize an opportunity. I plan on investing in real estate for my whole working life. 1. Be privileged enough to not have to pay for university tuition. 2. Get an engineering pharmaceutical lawyer degree. 3. Live at your parents house to minimize expense. 4. Have no life outside of work and improving your own skills. Payroll deductions directly into two different retirement accounts plus an automatic transfer each month to a third investment account. I just consider that one like a monthly bill. The only thing that's left for me to consciously do is max out my Roth IRA every year. Currently over 30, but in my mid-twenties I started doing the usual $5,000 into an IRA. Then the company I worked at started retirement accounts for us. And back then with how long I had worked there, they matched what I put in by 50%. I lived with mom and dad at the time, so with no expenses I put in half of my paycheck into that account. Later, that company decided to only match up to 25%, and I started to put in 90% of my paycheck into that account. 
Then they decided to stop matching and I pulled my contributions back to 10%. TLDR. Retirement matching and living with mom and dad. I maxed out my 401k and IRA for a couple years, and have had a stable income and been investing at least small amounts regularly since I was 18. I'm 25 now and my net worth just hit 100k exactly, but most of it isn't liquid and lives in 401k s and iras. Oh and the kicker was I started my career by joining the military at 18. It allowed me to avoid debt and earn pay while learning a valuable trade. 30 currently and would have had over 100k by now, but put 45k cash down on my house last year. I'll have my house paid off in full by the time I am 40. Currently paying 3x my minimum payment each month. Currently have about 20k liquid in my savings and checking accounts, with probably 50-60k in 401k. Currently dropping $1000 a month into savings, 6% of my salary into my 401k, making 80k per year in a low cost of living city, I'm still a spender, though, beer, trips, whatever, frick being cheap, I want to enjoy life, not just save for a retirement I may never reach for whatever reason, saving enough of course, but still buying and splurging in hobbies and such, life experiences are more important. Graduated from a top 10 university in the US with zero school debt. Full ride. My first position I made 80k base and OT and I lived at home. Lived in the suburbs and not in a place with many young people so I rarely went out. This is where most of my savings came from. People don't seem to realize how much you save living with your parents. I saved at least 1200 slash month from rent alone the first few years out of college. Add on utility and other fees and that's another few hunter. Built connections and was promoted to a manager level position within 3 years. I now make 120k but have since moved out and into my own place. People don't seem to realize how much you save living with your parents. This is the key. You essentially whittle your expenses down to almost nothing. Worked my real job. Did freelance on the side. Lived below my means while still doing things I cared about, and kept my tax deductions high so I had a sweet return check to put directly into savings every year. I don't necessarily recommend this, but seeing it grow in big chunks like that was a good motivator for me. But not me but my friend. He has rich parents. In fact all of his relatives earn over 100k a year. He just went ahead and studied law. I don't know the English word. Had decent results and earns a lot. This no longer applies to me, but it did 2 years ago so. I worked as a software engineer so I made a pretty decent salary, and I lived with my mom and stayed relatively frugal until I was ready to buy my own house. Way past 30 now but I had over 100k back then, was working in tech, was paid well, had equity in some smaller tech firms, sold, took promotions and saved responsibly, but 41 years old now and have over 300k in 401k and over 150k in other investment accounts. What the above poster said, work hard and be responsible with your dollar sign dollar sign. Got a good paying job, didn't have any expensive hobbies, saved a ton of the money, there aren't any tricks, just don't be stupid with your money. I was under 30 when I hit it. But I grew up in straight poverty, NYC kid, community college paid for out of pocket, then a local state school where I lived at home and commuted. I worked from the summer after my high school graduation as a bartender, a hair salon cleaner, and a retail cashier, and kept those jobs when school started. Took as many classes online as I could and had no social life to speak of other than when friends would visit me while bartending. I graduated with two bachelors in four years with no student debt. Parents wouldn't give me their tax info for FAFSA, a paid off hoopty, a job offer making 26k dollars a year in 2009 that required weekly travel 4 states away, and an IRA worth $2.000 from what I could save while working. I was 30 before I lived alone, and I was 29 before I lived someplace that didn't look like the neighborhood it was in would be the site of a murder scene. I shared rooms, cooked 90% of all my meals. Thank you meal preps and day, and still do, wear second hand clothes that I mend and tailor as appropriate, thanks YouTube videos, and have only driven other hoopties, and avoided car payments, 
Every dollar that isn't budgeted for goes to investments and savings. I set up small goals 1k dollar in a savings account, 10k dollars invested, 1 month's salary in savings, etc. As I met them, I would privately celebrate, think buying a $2 cookie or a $3 fancy coffee, and make a new goal. I was 26 when I hit 100k dollars net worth and 29 when I hit 100k dollars in investments. I switched jobs every 3 years like clockwork, I negotiated every single dollar they pay me, I have a side job, and I sell plasma sit for medical studies. I make a very good living now, but I still live like I'm poor because 1. It's comfortable to me and 2. I can lose everything in the blink of an eye. Thanks 2008 recession for that crippling monetary anxiety, it's absolutely possible to do. It just isn't fun for everyone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.